Good morning, everyone. Leah Dixon here from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I am live on Wednesday morning. I go live every Wednesday morning, actually. Um, and for the next few weeks, I'm running a five-week Christmas card series. So last week, I featured the Sweetest Candy Cane Bundle. This week, I am featuring the Christmas Scotties Bundle, which is an adorable stamp set. Um, love that it comes with a plaid image in there, as well as some snowflakes and um, sweet sentiments. And then there's also a punch that goes with this bundle. And so this is our Christmas Scotty dog. And to be quite honest, I love him just on his own, even without the stamped images. Um, he's just such a sweet little Scotty dog, all punched out on his own. So this is the bundle that I'm featuring this week for my um, Christmas card class. Um, it's a free online class. And then if you would like to get the make and takes, you can place a $50 order to receive the make and takes and you'll get um, enough supplies to make two each of the three cards I demo today. And with a $70 order, you'll also get um, a package of the adhesive-backed seasonal sequins um, thrown in with your kit as, a, as an extra thank you. So they're super sweet. Um, you're going to see them up close and personal today because I'm using them on two of the cards. And um, yeah, so that is kind of how... Um, my online Christmas card class works. If you've got these things already and just want to stamp along, go for it. If you want to get the printed tutorial and the make and take kit, then um, you get those things free with a $50 order. So I'm going to spotlight just my desktop now so that we can get started stamping. All right, so there's another up close view of this set this bundle um so you're gonna see it all in action i'm gonna move these out of the way and bring in our first card so our first card sorry i just knocked something over um our first card is just the sweetest little thing this was actually inspired by something that um erica sir when i demo down in the states created and then i just kind of changed up the, pa the paper and the colors um so this is using one of my favorite packs. It's a host pack of paper um, called Celebrate Everything. And I just love it because it has a lots of non-traditional Christmas colors in it. And I really do love non-traditional Christmas cards. All right, so in your package, you will receive all the cardstock bits that you need. Um, and including like all the specialty papers and everything and your two envelopes so to create this i'm going to need one of our card bases one piece of black cardstock one piece of our designer series paper something to punch out our doggy with and um a piece of vellum all right and i think oh my do you know what i think i forgot to add in a small scrap of paper for our bow. So I'm just gonna go grab a scrap right now and add it into my sample so I don't forget when it comes time to prep the kits. <laughs> so there we go, sample, scrap there and a scrap there. Wonderful. All right, so we are going to get started stamping. The first thing that we're actually going to stamp is going to be this scrap piece of paper that we have. And I'm going to stamp it with um, our plaid in polished paint. So when you do this, you'll actually get enough, um, enough image stamped that you'll be able to punch out both bows for, um, for the two bows that you're gonna need for the two cards that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna come in here and just like that. And there you have it. We have our polished pink plaid on our scrap piece of paper. And I am just gonna clean up that because I know I'm gonna be using it again, but in different colors. So I'm gonna clean it right away so I don't forget. All right. So with that stamped in polished pink, I'm going to grab my punch. I'm holding it kind of upside down and I'm going to come in until I can see that my bow is completely covered in plaid. Now I've also oriented mine so that the bottom of the bow 
um, has all the plaid kind of on a diagonal. That's kind of how I like it. There we go. So there we have one cute little plaid bow, and then we can turn it around and punch out the other one for the other side. But I'm going to actually set that. Actually, no, I'm going to do mine now. Um, there we go. So even though I'm not going to use this one on this card, I'm going to use it on the second card because you get enough stuff to make two cards. Don't forget. All right. So there we have it. We've got enough stuff there to make two cute little bows. All right. So with our bow done, we can grab our piece of black cardstock and we're going to come in and punch out our little doggy. And you get a bonus black bow with it. You can save those or recycle them, whatever you want to do with them. All right. So there we have our little doggy. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to stamp our... Um, Oh, that's interesting. I also put in the wrong card basis with this one. I wonder if I swapped card basis with another card. That's funny. Okay, I'm going to swap these out and put in different card bases. I think I might have been tired. Oh, yeah, look, there we go. I just put them into the wrong envelope. There are my two card bases that are the direction I want. These ones go with the other one. All right. So what we're going to do is take that so this is our correctly oriented card base so we want a card that opens to the side all right so we're going to set that to the side i've got a piece of basic black here that just layers on nicely and i'm going to use my embossing buddy and just get rid of any oils or fingerprints that may be on here there we go and then I'm going to use the Merry Christmas from this stamp set to stamp. But first of all, I'm going to take my designer series paper. I'm not going to glue it down yet because if I make a mistake, I'll be able to flip things around. Um, but I am going to place it on top kind of as like a placeholder. And I'm going to grab my Versamark ink. And here we go. I am going to stamp that kind of near the bottom centered on this half of the black paper. So with that done, I am then going to grab my white embossing powder and run that over top. There we go. All right, so that's all covered up and then I'll just give it a little tap to get rid of any excess and we're going to heat emboss that. So I'll bring in my heat tool and we will heat that one up. There we go. I absolutely love the look of embossed things on cards. It just makes them pop so much. Okay, so now we're just all about putting this card together. So I'm going to grab my liquid glue, that is my favorite, and start gluing this down. Um, so I do see that we have some people watching. If you want to say hi, I'd love to know who's here, how you guys are doing today. Um, it's a quiet day. I'm thankful for the day off after a Halloween at school and a November 1st at school. Um, my class was quite good, but, you know, that's based on the fact that they were tired and sugared. <laughs> so, relative speaking, they were really good. Um, all right, so there we go. We've got that piece glued down, and then I'm going to take this whole layer and glue it to my card base. go and just pop this in just like that. I do like the liquid glue because I can shuffle it around, get it all nicely lined up before I press down. There we go. So 
that layer is attached. And now I'm actually going to put my Scotty dog together and put him on the vellum before I attach it to the card front. And I'm going to show you why. It's a little trick for hiding our adhesives. Um, so I'm going to get some mini glue dots and my take your pick tool. Here we go. All right. I got a backwards roll, or I don't know, maybe it's the right way, but it's different from my last roll where the mini glue dots are attached to the outside ring. And I'm having some difficulty getting used to it. All right. So we're going to put a little bow onto our Scotty dog. And then I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of my Scotty dog. So one up near his head. Oops. Took the backing off instead of the dimensional. And one down near his bum. So we're going to take those and take the backings off. And I'm going to put him onto the vellum circle. So now that he's on the vellum circle, I can flip it over and I can see exactly where I can put adhesive. And I am going to use mini glue dots for this. You could also use really any dry adhesive, so like seal or anything. And I'm going to put some up in his tail area. Um, I'm going to put some down by his feet. Down by each foot, actually. Right, so let's put this over top of white so I can see it. There we go. And I'm going to put some up by his head. So I'm really putting a lot of adhesive on the back of this, but it's all hidden behind our little dog. Okay. And then I'm going to pop this in and try to center it. There we go. Attach that. And then the last thing to do for this card is to add a little bit of bling. So I actually chose to use rhinestones on this one. Um, but you could also use, oops, I've got some runaway rhinestones. Um, where are all my rhinestones? Oh my. Uh, there's a pack. Except, oh, and there's one to use it. All right, so you could also use the white, um, the white adhesive back sequins from your kit, and that would also look really, really nice. I just had run out of um, my small ones, and I did want to have a variety of size, so I am using rhinestones instead. Trying to use up, I always seem to end up with too many of the big ones. I really like the small rhinestones, and even though they give you more of them, I always seem to use my small ones too quickly. All right, so I'm going to pop that in there, and then we'll do some more down at the bottom. So I really do have quite a few rhinestones on this card. And there we go. And voila. So like I said, you could do this exact same thing though with the white um, sequins, and I think it would show up really, really nicely. Um, I just don't have enough, so... There you go. Um, but I do have an opened packs to pop into your kits. Um, so that's with a $70 order. So that is our first card complete. Now there is one thing I'd like to show you is that if you would like to decorate your envelope, we have the sweetest little snowflake in this kit. And so I'm going to grab my polished pink ink again and just pop three little pink snowflakes onto my envelope so it's all matchy matchy with my card inside uh, so that is our first card complete from this set and i'm just going to pop all the materials the correct materials now back into here so i have my guide for cutting your kits all right and set those to the side wonderful all right so our second card today is the sweetest little traditional Christmas card. Um, 
And so this one uses shaded spruce. And so we'll just come in here. There's lots of little bits when you get your envelopes. Make sure to pour out the bits uh, because there are a ton of them down there at the bottom. All right, and then we're going to just grab one of each piece. So we've got a shaded spruce, a basic white, another really pretty piece of designer series paper, um, a label, a piece of basic white to go on our label, and then we need some bits for our gift. All right, and then we'll pop the rest of these back in here so that we can put that together later. All right. So this card is a little bit of a fun fold. You'll notice that you don't get a full card base. This is just a partial card base because we're going to actually build the rest of it. So I'm going to give that a little score. And then I'm going to glue my basic white layer, my large basic white piece, on the inside right away. That's going to help me remember which way this card is going as well as get that piece out of the way so that I don't um, accidentally stamp on it or do anything like that. Okay, so here we go. So some liquid glue. And we'll pop that inside. All right. There we have it. So it's so nice doing these Christmas card series. It's a great way for me to be able to show you guys some of our great products, but also to, for me to be able to get ready for some of the Christmas craft fairs that I'm doing in the next few weeks. If you are local to me in Port Coquitlam, um, I'm actually going to be at Terry Fox Secondary this Saturday um, from 9 to 4, and uh, they're having a big Christmas craft fair, so it's going to be awesome. There's a like hundred vendors um, and then the weekend of the 19th I'm going to be at um, Riverside Community Church over on Fremont and um, again they have about 40 vendors and I'll be there all day and then finally there's um, also the Coquitlam River shopping night on November 16th so lots of opportunities to pop out and say hi to me and do some Christmas shopping. I'm going to have kits and stuff with me. So I'd love to see you there. All right, actually, we'll just leave that. We're going to do a little bit of stamping on this piece. So what's going to happen is this is going to get layered onto here. But first of all, we're going to do some stamping here. Um, so first things first, I'm going to do the dog um, and then I'll tr figure out where the sentiment goes. Now, I am going to try and do the dog far enough over that the sentiment will fit nicely and there won't be any issues, but, you know, best laid plans. Um, <laughs> so I've got the little Scotty dog that's sitting up begging, and I've got my Memento Black ink. Now, if you prefer to use um, a Stazon, that works really well. Or if you want to be able to do multiple layers um, of inking here so that you get him really dark, you can use your Stamparatus and do that. Um, and also having a really well inked memento pad helps. So I think I've got him inked up well enough. I don't have a super juicy pad, unfortunately, but um, I'll show you a little trick. If you stamp him and he's not dark enough, we have little ways that we can fix that. There we go. So I've stamped him and he's not bad, not bad, but he's not as dark as I'd like. So I'm going to grab my light. This is important that you've got the light basic black um, stamp and blend. If you use the dark one, it's actually too dark if that's a thing. Um, and then, you just come on in here and give it a little run over. You don't even have to get super close to the edges because you'll probably notice that the edges are actually quite dark. It's just the inside where it's not as solid as maybe you'd like. And I just give this a quick run over with my Stampin' Blends. And all of a sudden, he is super dark and looking fine. So just a little cheat if you're if you don't have a stamparatus or 
um, you don't like me. I I do know that stays on creates a much nicer look, but I don't love working with it on paper. I kind of reserve it for things that I need it for, like working on ceramics and stuff. Um, because it does take a toll on your stamps. you got to clean them differently and yeah I'm a bit of a lazy stamper okay so there we go our Scotty dog let's get this little here there we go our Scotty dog is all fixed up it's like he's just been to the groomers oh good morning Martin good morning Norma so that is our Scotty dog all set now we have to give him his little bow and put our sentiment and everything on here so our bow is being added in with sweet sorbet now you could use any red really um i'm just a little obsessed with sweet sorbet these days um i find it's a bright fun red so i'm just really enjoying using it so i've stamped his little color on and you saw how quick and easy that was like it just lines up so beautifully and then i've used the larger of the two side bows that are on the stamp set. There we go. So there is a smaller one if you find that's too big for your liking. Okay, so that's stamped. Now I'm going to grab the shaded spruce and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And honestly, this sentiment is the reason I bought this stamp set. May your days be furry and bright. I just like, I loved it. I have so many other dog stamps that I can use this sentiment with as well. And I just, I love it. So for all my doggy people out there, that one's for you. So may your days be furry and bright. So cute. Now with that stamped, we've got to create our little gift. Um, our gift is actually quite easy to create. We're going to grab our basic black ink again and our plaid. We're going to ink up. You don't even need to ink up the whole thing. Just ink up one section of it quite well. And then make sure the section you inked is the one you use. Um, and we're going to stamp that little square. Now, it's stuck on our back, so I'm just grabbing my Take Your Pick tool and popping that off. There we go. So now I have this adorable little plaid gift to put onto our card front, but I have to decorate it first. So you've got a tiny, tiny strip of white glimmer paper, and then you've got a little bit of a larger square of it. We're going to use this larger square and pop this in now you do have to just shuffle it around a bit but luckily you're not lining anything up you're just making sure the whole thing's in there and then you can punch that out so now you've got the beautiful shiny bow there we go and so we're going to use mini glue dots to put this together so this backing here you could use liquid glue on here um, but i'm actually going to use Maybe I'm going to use mini glue dots, except there we go. I put them down right beside me and couldn't see them. Okay, so find this. So I'm going to peel off a mini glue dot. And when I put it on here, I'm actually going to put it kind of near what I guess will be the bottom and just spread it out a bit. Just smush it behind. And then I'm going to pop this on here so that it's centered-ish. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way to the top because the next thing we're going to do is use a second mini glue dot to attach our bow to the top of our gift. Okay, so just like that. And so it hid anything that didn't quite make it to the top. Now I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. And I'm going to use two of them. I know it seems excessive for such a small gift, but I'm going to use one at the top just to reinforce holding that bow on, and then one at the bottom. All right. And this gets placed so that our doggy's little paw is just tapping the top of it. There we go. All right. 
So with that done, we can add this piece to our um, scallop trim, scallop contours label here. So just some liquid glue and pop that right inside there. So we've got it inside the little um, dotted border. And now to attach this to our card front, I have a cute, a quick little trick for you so that it all stays perfectly lined up. We're going to flip it over and put two dimensionals right out on these far corners. And then our other two dimensionals, though, we're going to put directly onto the card front. Now you'll notice I just put this here so I could get a general distance. So now with all of those there, I'm going to peel off all four backings. And then I'm going to center this and put it down. That way I don't end up with a card that gets glued shut and I don't end up with adhesive showing. Hi, Shirley. Thanks for joining this morning. All right, so now you guys get to see the sequins in action. Sorry, I have other sequins thrown in here as well. So the seasonal sequins are the gold, green, red, and white. And we are going to grab a few green ones today and pop these onto our card. Okay. And another little green one for up here. And those are the embellishments for this one. So that is our second card in today's card class. And I hope you guys like that one a little bit more traditional. Oh, merci, Martine. <laughs> yeah. And then for your envelope, I'll actually just grab an envelope here. You've got a few choices. You could do um, some snowflakes in green or whatever. But what I'm actually going to do is pop this little doggy, not the whole thing, but just a little piece of him onto my card front and put a little bow on him. So just have him peeking onto my card. And actually, maybe I'll do him from this side. There we go. So he's just sneaking in on the left-hand side. So pop him on there and then grab my sweet sorbet and my ribbon and put a little bow on him. There we go. And his little bow. Voila. So he's just sneaking into the picture on the front of that envelope. Um, super, super cute. All right, so that is our decorated envelope for that one. Um, now, our third card today. These are my favorite colors. Um, is our Coastal Cabana and Pool Party um, card. So I absolutely love this one just pop that to the side so in this one we have now finally the correct card base because I brought it over from that other one um, we've got a card that's actually um, 11 by 4 and a quarter so that it's kind of stands sideways this is my preferred way of doing um, horizontal cards because I find they stand better on mantles and stuff um, they have a Yorkshire stamp set Oh, that would be cute if they had the Yorkies. Aww. Um, yeah. I wonder, could... I guess the Yorkie doesn't look enough like a Scotty that you could just color them differently. Hmm. Yeah. So we've got lots of little bits in this card. So um, you're going to get both, like, everything you need to make two cards all in one envelope, and then you'll get the extra envelope as well. So I'm just kind of picking through and making sure that I get all the little pieces that I need. And then I do have just the one piece to do the two bows. So I'm gonna stamp, not stamp, punch the bow out right away so I can put the other half in with my envelopes. So um, here we go. 
Let's pop this in. And the trick to these is just to make sure they're fully in the pen. And then there you go. So we've got our little bow punched out. All right. So that's going to go off to the side. So we are going to create this one. And we're going to start with our stamping. There isn't much stamping on this card. So we're going to start with this little square. This little square, you'll notice, layers nicely onto the white glimmer square. Okay, so we're going to start with that. We're going to grab our plaid and we're going to ink it up in black. And so that's why I didn't bother cleaning it after the last one. Um, because I knew I'd be using it in black again. Okay, so there we go. Ink that up in black. And having it on a white background kind of helps. Also lining it up. There we go. And then we just press down and create our black plaid now. Again, oh, you can see I'm using <laughs> recycled papers. Um, I've got stuff stamped on the back. All right, so now I didn't quite get that one perfect. Um, there's a little bit of a missed spot. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I think, is just trim this slightly. Um, I'm going to trim it on all sides and just make it a tiny bit smaller. You could also, if I didn't have snowflakes on the back, I could flip it over. Um, but I do, so I am just going to trim that ever so slightly. But I'm going to trim it on two sides so that it continues to be a square. All right. So, just like that. not even noticeable that's going to layer on just as nicely onto there if you don't like the thicker border then you could trim down the glimmer square as well um, but i actually really like the thicker border so it's all good now attaching things to glimmer paper is not as easy as it seems so i'm actually going to use mini glue dots for this instead of liquid glue um, you could also use like seal or tear and tape to do this, but I do find that liquid glue, although eventually it will hold, it's hold in the beginning is very loose and I didn't like how it felt crafting with it. Um, I actually had to sit and wait quite a while before I felt like it was firm and going to hold. So we're going to use mini glue dots instead. Um, and they're going to have a faster hold so that we can confidently create and keep moving. Okay, so that, we're going to position it first. And once we're happy with how it's lined up, then you can push down. And you'll notice that those mini glue dots really grabbed it quickly and have a strong hold. All right, so that is that piece all ready to go. Next up is to grab our Scotty dog. And again, the piece that you've got here, pop him in and you're gonna get a bonus black bow. Do with that as you please. Maybe a cute little white Scotty with a black bow would be nice. Um, there we go. So I've got my Scotty, now somewhere, there we go. Somewhere I had my bow. I'm going to attach his bow with a mini glue dot. Come on, there we go. And so just like that. Just like that, there we go. And right away, I'm actually going to embellish him with, I found a way to use up all the big white ones that I wasn't using. Um, we're going to embellish them right away with a large white sequins on there. There we go. All right, and then he can get attached to our square using dimensionals. So one up at his head, one down at his rear, and we'll put that right here on our square. 
there we go so that part is ready next step for this card is to do some stamping on our piece of pool party paper now you want to make sure like you want to double check see that was a little too tall so you want to make sure about your orientation before we do this and once you've got that lined up we're going to grab the furry and bright and some black ink and we're going to stamp that in the bottom right hand corner there we go and i like this one because we're stamping first so if we make a mistake we can flip it over all right now I have to clean up my snowflakes because I still had pink ink on them from that envelope. So clean those up and I'm going to stamp these in Coastal Cabana. Um, I like the Coastal Cabana just because it's a little bit brighter than say if we were doing pool party on pool party. All right, so I'm gonna stamp one down there and then I'm gonna come up here and kind of stamp my way diagonally across this card and I don't worry too much about the center because it's going to get covered up so I just created that little diagonal um, across there and that was with Coastal Cabana ink actually and while we have that Coastal Cabana ink why don't we if I can find it there's my envelope why don't we add some Coastal Cabana snowflakes to our envelope while we're at it. So I'm gonna do one on the front. And you could also, here's a fun little one. If you wanted to stamp the envelope flap, I just take a piece of scrap paper and fold it so that I can put the envelope underneath so that just the flap is shown. And then, You can come along and stamp all over the place. And you can kind of like even let them go off the edges and it doesn't matter. And I like to rotate this a bit as I go so that we don't end up with the same snowflakes everywhere. There we go. And we just kind of keep going around the edges until our whole flap is covered. So you could have done this on the pink one as well, but I just felt like maybe the pink snowflakes were a bit bright and uh, keeping it simple on the front would have been, was the better thing to do with the pink ones. But um, So now we have one set on the front and then a beautiful decorated flap on our envelope. All right, so that's created for that. Now, We've got this stamping done. We're going to have to add our pieces now in a very specific order so we get our layers done correctly. So first thing you want to do is actually um, come in here and make sure that these are all kind of the same width. So you'll see there that these are actually just a little bit longer than this piece. So I'm going to trim them just ever so slightly because I want them to be the same size as this. So sometimes, sometimes I think I'm cutting them all the same width and then they're just not quite. All right, so that one, just like that. Okay, so come on in here and I'm just going to slightly trim this. Oh. And it says it is trimmed. It says it's the same. That's interesting. So the other option is to come on in. Oh, and that did just bend the edges. That's what it was. It's so close that it won't even cut it. So I'm just going to grab some paper snips and do the trim myself. All right. So it's like a little bit finicky. There we go. Okay, so that one's gonna be good. And then I'm gonna come in as well with my DSP and just make sure. So yeah, you can see that it's just ever so slightly off. So I'm just gonna trim it with paper snips. 
because it's too tiny even to trim it with a paper trimmer. All right. And that might just be me. You might not care that much. Um, oh, thank you, Martine. Yeah, this is my favorite, absolute favorite color combo. So you're going to see here we've got these scallops. You can actually decide which scallop you would prefer. I really like this light one, actually. Um, so I'm going to keep it the way it is. I'm just going to double check that if I put that down and then that down. So it's just a lot of double checking your sizing. Yeah. Okay, good. That's going to work. All right. So, oh, and let's just double check for across because I may want to trim this just a bit. Nope, that's going to work. Okay, perfect. Um, actually, I'm going to just shorten up the distance a bit on this one. Um, I've given you guys, when I cut these, I, I'll be giving you lots of leeway so that you can really play with these and get the look you like. Um, so I just wanted that a little bit closer to the edge. All right. So this is going to get glued right there so that you've got an equal um, border on all three sides. And... And our next pieces are actually going to get glued together before I glue them down. So I'm going to take my piece here and the end where I've got my sentiment, I am actually going to run some adhesive along there. I'm using um, Seal Plus, but you could also just use mini glue dots, something that's going to grab this glimmer paper and then I'm going to put this down and pick up my glimmer paper so that I'm getting just a really nice about eighth of an inch border of that glimmer. Okay, so that's why you want to use like mini glue dots or seal or something so that it'll really pick that up. Once you've got that done, then you can add liquid glue to this. That'll let, allow us to wiggle it around a bit when we're putting it on our card front. And I'm going to put this down so that I've got a nice border on this end. Oops, wait, so that it's straight. Come on. There we go. Nice border. And it's overlapping, but we can still see that full scallop. There we go. So that's kind of the tricky part of this card is just getting those layers done so that they fit perfectly on our card front as well as with each other. Okay, now we get to add our snowflakes. So this is one of our wonderful snowflakes. Um, they're fantastic. You get them in a pack of 24. You will have your two for your two cards in your card kit. Um, and we're just going to put that on here so that it's up as close as it can be to that top left corner. And I just put a mini glue dot on the back to attach it. And then our last step is to use some liquid glue and attach our little Scotty dog so he's centered on the pool party piece and kind of covering up the center of our snowflake. And I'm gonna use liquid glue for that. go and so that piece goes right there so we're above our sentiment and we're kind of center dish on that front there we go and that is our third card complete um oh thank you martin yeah it is i think my favorite card in the the set of three it is such a little cute little cute one all right so our three cards from today's card class are all in kind of nice um well one traditional two non-traditional christmas card colors but all featuring that awesome little scotty dog um, so thank you so much for joining me today
And um, this card kit will be available all week long until Sunday night. And so a $50 order gets you the make and take and the printable PDF. And a $70 order gets you that as well as a package of the adhesive back seasonal sequins. And um, I'll be back next Wednesday with another Christmas card class featuring the trees for sale. Um, so I'm excited about that one as well. Oh, thank you very much, Norma and Shirley. So have a wonderful, wonderful week. If you are a local and want to pop by and see me this weekend at the craft fair, I would love that. And otherwise, I will see you next Wednesday um, for my next Christmas card class. Oh, thank you, Martine. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.